Uh, obviously, one minute uh, before the stroke of midnight in Kabul, uh, Chairman, uh, you know, the United States completes its military mission. Now the Secretary of State takes over. He's the one who gives the prime, uh, prime time address. He lays out the seven steps of what comes next. Are you confident with where the U.S. goes from here? Well, absolutely not. It is a very chaotic, very difficult situation. As you noted, the Taliban cannot be trusted. I mean, even the Taliban can't control the Taliban, and they certainly can't control ISIS-K, okay. uh, as we learned a few days ago. So, no, I mean, no, no one should be confident about the situation in, in, in the chaotic um, situation that we have in Afghanistan. Now, what I do think is the case is, you know, Secretary Blinken has made it clear that part of the plan, and look, they did not explain this clearly. We, we had a briefing last week and they said, we will complete our mission by August 31st. And a number of us pressed them on, okay, but what is that mission? And they were saying it was one thing when it was really something else. The mission really was, we gotta be out by August 31st because if we're not, the Taliban are gonna turn on us and it becomes impossible. But we wanna get as many people out as possible by that deadline and crucially put in place a situation where we have enough of a relationship with the Taliban to keep getting people out after. Um, that that was the mission, even though it wasn't that clearly explained. So when you hear where they are, 123,000 people have come out, 6,000 Americans. He laid out that the Americans remaining are in complicated situations. Many of them have been there a long time, have family ties. But he says fewer than 100, uh, I'm sorry, than 200 closer to 100. Did that number surprise you with how low it was, how high it was? Where do you no, stand on really, it? Not based on the conversations. And you, you've had access to this information like we have as well. I mean, that, that, seemed, that, that was about yep. what we would have expected and about what we were hearing about the last few days. All right. So let me ask you then um, about some of these other numbers. First of all, the 123,000, okay, people that have come out of Afghanistan as part of this mission. The United States has a history of resettling refugees, but, but never in the numbers, certainly not in any kind of recent history that we're seeing now and that we're about to see. So where you stand as chairman of the Armed Services Committee, where are all these people going to go? Are you confident from the briefings you've had that, that they're going to be vetted, we're going to know who they are, that there's a plan on where they're going to go, or is this just going to be sort of, I don't know, hope and a prayer? It's an extraordinarily difficult situation because they were brought out with no clear plan on where to take them. It was an emergency right. situation. Um, so they were responding to that emergency, and the mission was get them out. Um, we'll wor you know, worry about the details later. So, yeah, no, it is chaotic and it's difficult. I mean, right now, as I understand it, in, in Qatar, where we have a fair number of these people, I mean, they're, they're, they're struggling just to make sure that they get enough food and water to take care of them. So this is a plan that is going to have to be developed from this point forward. It's going to be difficult to care for these people. We do have other nations um, that have agreed to take some of the refugees. Um, I think we can work it out, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of international cooperation. Yeah, I mean, I, in a sense, it seems like it's just the beginning of something really huge, and people, uh, it hasn't really sunk in. Um, but let me ask you about one other thing in your role as chairman of armed services. So General McKenzie today said the United States in this final day, right, till one minute before midnight, removed or demilitarized weapons or equipment that were at the airport at Kabul. But of course, we do know that sort of in the chaos and unexpected, you know, end of the Afghan government, a lot of things were left behind that they didn't think they were going to leave behind. Helicopters, guns, ammunition, all sorts of things in the hands of the Taliban. Are you, are you aware right now of what was left and what wasn't? I mean, have you been given all the numbers and feel confident that you know what's left there that could get in the hands of the Taliban or ISIS-K or some other group? We, we have not been given all the numbers yet. I mean, you've seen, you, you've reported on it and shown us pretty clearly what happened. Because of how rapidly the regime collapsed, a lot of that stuff was left because we, we had left it uh, for the Afghan government. Uh, but now the Taliban is the Afghan government. I mean, look, if there was one sort of central failing in this, in this exit, it was to not, you know, take a cold eyed look at what was going on there and say, the Taliban are going to take over. And whether it's it's weeks or months, it's not going to be years. It's going to be days, weeks, or months. And if that's the case, what do we need to do? And two big things. One, we need to pull a lot more equipment out. Two, we needed to get people out sooner, particularly the Afghan SIVs. That should have started much sooner than it did. 